What's up, Mopar fam? I hope everybody out there is having a fantastic time. So we're back at it with the Torque Storm Supercharger budget build on Frostbite. And today we are going to be putting in the injectors, which I've already actually done the passenger side injectors. i got to do the driver side still. And we're going to be putting in the new 3-bar map sensor that Jay Green told us to get. And there's a little trick to using that map sensor I'm going to show you that you will have to do if you end up doing this yourself. And we're going to try to get to some of the intercooler piping, guys. So let's get to it. Okay, guys. So we are pretty much on the Torque Storm instructions. We're at the injector part and what they recommend per these instructions. And this is what they did on the fourth gen truck that they built this kit for. So they used the Chrysler... Hellcat injectors, that's the part number and the quantity. And then they went with this fuel pump from Holly. Okay, so as most of you guys know, I work with Jay Green. What we went with per his recommendation was 80 pound Simmons injectors. I found them on Amazon for $50 a piece. And as far as the fuel pump goes, so as of right now, Jay is telling me to leave my fuel pump alone. Most of the time, the stock fuel system on these trucks will supply plenty enough fuel for the amount of boost we're expecting to see for right now. And I've also been running the stock fuel pump with my nitrous system, and I've never had an issue with not having enough fuel for that. And that is definitely probably asking more fuel than what we're going to be asking out of the fuel system with boost but we will probably end up upgrading it in the future i'm sure especially when we start trying to use both systems at the same time but for right now we're going to leave it alone now this is talking about the intercooler guys so right here this is telling you about the coolant tank which we've already removed and we've pretty much already done the intercooler mounting this is the instructions and the measurements of the intercooler they went with so it's showing you measurements and everything for the intercooler that they had built for this build and they even go through on the size and type of couplings size pipe 45s so forth basically going through the whole build that they did when they installed this intercooler that they had built so if you want to completely copy these instructions, you can. They're very good, and it goes over a lot. This is the coolant overflow tank that they ended up going with. It's basically just an aftermarket overflow tank because you will have to get rid of your factory one. I've already bought one. Um, I don't have it with me today, but I will show you guys which one I ended up going with. And when we get to this page, this is talking about the tuning. You're going to need to get a tune. You're going to need to replace the map sensor. So per the build that they did when they built this kit, they went with this part number map sensor, a Mopar map sensor, and I believe it's a two bar map, and Jay did not want me to run that. I'm sure it's fine. It's working just great on the Torque Storm truck, but Jay ended up wanting me to actually run this map sensor which is a three bar map sensor from Mopar and that's the one that he recommended we run and it's basically the same as the stock one except for we will have to modify it a little bit and I'll show you what we got to do and then we will be getting to the blow off valve install as soon as we get all the intercooler piping pretty much ran and done but we're pretty much to the end guys we're almost there so let's get this map sensor in and the other side of the injectors installed let's get to it all right so the map sensor on the fourth gen rams is back here on the left side rear of the manifold it's kind of hidden back there i'm not sure if you guys can see it especially with my hand probably back here but you can see the wiring harness coming up right next to the fuel rail right here so we're going to unplug this connector. You just press the button, pull it off, and you, you will think this thing will come right up because it's actually loose. There is no hardware that holds it on. It actually has like a little uh, 
kind of like a little cantilever system, but basically you will turn it counterclockwise about a, about a half revolution, probably about a 180 more or less, and it will pop right up once you do that. So you'll turn it counterclockwise and pull up on it and it comes right out. There you go. So that's the old map sensor right here. And we're going to go over to the bench and we're going to show you the new one and what we got to do to the new one to run the three bar map that Jay is recommending that we use. Alright guys, so here is the old map sensor and here is the new map sensor that Jay said to run. Now they are basically more or less identical except for the new one has a tab here for a bolt which we're gonna cut off this tab so that this will not be in our way when we go to twist our twist this one in just like the factory one and the other difference is and it's the same with the torque storm one that they recommend is this new one has right here it's hard to point to it but you can see that little extra groove right there on the new one that has to be ground down it cannot be there and that is so that the factory connector can plug onto this map sensor as you notice the factory one as you see does not have that extra groove it just has the one right here it does not have that one so we have to grind this down and make it look like the factory plug and then we got to get rid of this tab other than that it's absolutely identical except for the fact this is a three bar map and this is not very expensive if I remember right I think it was like thirty something dollars um, but I'm gonna put the part number in the description of the video so let's get to grinding that stuff off alright so what we're gonna use as far as tools to cut off this little ear tab here and then grind off that extra little groove is we're going to use a pair of snips and we're just going to trim this off as close as we can and then we're going to use this little die grinder to clean up the edges and smooth it out and then we'll use this also to get rid of that extra little groove right here so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to get rid of this extra groove and get that gone So you can see we got the extra little groove, the little tab right here on the side. It's completely gone now, nice and smooth. Now we got to get rid of that uh, little ear. And we're going to use a pair of snips and just try to snip off as much as we can of this guy. And after we do that, we're going to use our grinder here and just clean it up as close as we can to the groove there and I'm also trying to keep my finger over the inlet of the map sensor so we don't get any debris in there So as you can see, our tab now is pretty much completely gone. It shouldn't be in our way anymore. And now we pretty much have an exact clone of what the factory one was, except this is a three bar map. Now let's go get it installed. All right, we got our new map ready to roll. I'm gonna try to test fit the plug real quick, make sure it plugs in. And it does. So now we are gonna drop it in.
and it popped in just like the old one did. Connector plugged right on. I heard it click nice and good. And that's it, guys. So we got one new map sensor ready to roll. Now we just need to get the injectors on on the driver side. So we're going to work on that next. Definitely never like working on this side of the truck. Everything's a little more crammed in. Plus you got the fuel rail, fuel line right there. And my nitrous lines are kind of running this way too. So it's just definitely a cramped situation for sure. So it looks like we're going to have just enough room with that cover drop down. Now, of course, you got to kind of lean over and fight the brake fluid reservoir and the brake booster over here. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to I'm going to try to leave my fuel line and my nitrous connector hooked to the fuel rail. I really don't want to have to fight and unplug that. That's kind of a pain in the butt to get off and on. So I don't really don't think we're going to have to mess with that. We more or less just got to pull the fuel rail up, which it's loose now because those bolts we just took out for the cover actually goes to the same area where the fuel rail is held down with. It's the same screws. So right now our fuel rail is loose. We just got to pull it up. And then we will unplug the injectors and then pull the injectors out of the fuel rail and basically go in a reverse pattern. We'll put the new ones in and be done with it. And unfortunately, this is really not a whole lot that you guys will be able to see right here because it's so cramped. Um, so really at this point, guys, I'm going to pop the injector rail off and I'm going to go ahead and replace these injectors. Heck yeah, guys. I think that's going to do it for the video today. And uh, as always, guys, stay safe out there. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Tap the bell button for the notifications. And we'll see you guys on the next one.